have to go through a, a pretty Another serious one. storm, especially when we get to that part on Sunday morning when the wind starts howling and the snow will be at its heaviest and the temperatures start falling. So we have a lot to cover here. We mentioned the blizzard warning for eastern Massachusetts, the winter storm warning for central Mass, and the winter storm watch farther to the west. But we also have to be aware of the coast because there's a coastal flood warning in effect. The high tide's roughly around 7.30 Sunday morning. Notice it's in effect for about an hour and a half before and about three and a half hours later. Why more later? Because the wind and the seas will be in the process of building. Now, it's really going to be north facing coastal areas that have to watch this. So, the bay side of Cape Cod, as well as up around Cape Ann, Plum Island, really have to be careful because there'll probably be a lot of beach erosion, minor coastal flooding, and there can be pockets of moderate coastal flooding. That is the Sunday morning high tide. The tide will be 10.1, which is not that high astronomically, thank Goodness, but we'll have at least a two or three foot storm surge and at least 20 foot waves, which will still be in the process of building at the time. All right, let's get to the weather story. It's very cold, as you know. It's only 10 degrees in Boston right now. We still have a wind, but in a lot of areas, the wind has gone almost calm and the temperature has just fallen like a rock. It's one below zero in Concord, it's four in Bedford, one below in Nashua. Check this out. 10 below zero in Norwood, three below in Taunton, very cold down on the Cape and the islands as well. So the cold air is in place and a very frigid start to tomorrow. We may get a little bit of sunshine for a little bit, and the wind will come lightly out of the south, and that will help to moderate temperatures a little, taking us into the 20s and close to the freezing mark along the islands. And that'll be for the end of the day tomorrow into the first part of tomorrow night. That's the first part of the storm. The second part, oh, let's say roughly around 4 a.m. on Sunday to noon, is all going to be accompanied by steadily increasing winds that will become powerful and steadily falling temperatures. So by the time we're 5 a.m. Sunday, we're 21. In the heavy snow bands, look by 10 a.m., 18 in Boston, still in those snow bands. And the temperature just keeps falling and falling and falling with powerful winds, low wind chill factors, a lot of blowing and drifting. Of snow. Now, the system is just coming out of the Great Lakes, but this is not its final form. This is just its infancy because once it gets to the coastline, it is going to start to develop. And once it's just east of us Sunday morning, it will be a very, very powerful and intense storm. That will be the position. Once it moves away, the skies will clear late Sunday or Sunday night, but the wind is going to continue all Sunday afternoon, even after the storm or the snow, I should say. Ends. So that's the story. What starts out as an innocent storm becomes one that's very powerful. We'll start to see increasing clouds, but a little bit of sun for Eastern Mass tomorrow morning. And right around lunchtime, snow is breaking out in the Berkshires. It starts to march from west to east. This is just the start. By late afternoon, it's here. Steady snow for tomorrow evening and for several hours. Now, look what could happen later tomorrow night, say 10 or 11 o'clock. For maybe three, four hours, that goes to the north. It's pounding snow along the New Hampshire and Maine coast, but then the secondary storm gets going, and this area builds up. This bends back. They come together, and 4 a.m., 6 a.m., 8 a.m., even 10 a.m., those bands of snow in eastern Massachusetts could be a couple of inches per hour with very powerful winds at that particular time and the falling temperatures. And then it all moves from west to east and finally ends on the outer cape around 3, 4, 5 o'clock Sunday afternoon. To give you an idea of the amounts, breaking it down, from mid afternoon tomorrow when the flakes start to fly to let's say about 11 o'clock tomorrow night, anywhere from 2 to 5 inches. And then that period, which will be lighter precipitation, 11 o'clock to about 4 in the morning, maybe 1 to 3. But in 4 a.m. to noon, there could be 5 to 10 inches or more, and there could be a fluff factor because when it gets cold, the snow can pile up. But it's going to be blinding and very dangerous out Sunday morning with the wind and the snow and the falling temperatures. When all is said and done, I think it'll be a foot or more for extreme eastern portions of Massachusetts, 8 to 12 farther to the west, and 6 to 10 plus still farther to the west. So that's how I see it breaking down. The wind gusts, they go from almost nothing tomorrow night to look at this, 48 miles per hour in Boston by 5 a.m. Look at these winds along the coast at 9.30, at 11.30, all the way up to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So that's why there is the risk of some power outages just due to the strength of the wind alone. Here's your next seven days, and I have to let you know how cold it is going to feel on Monday following this storm. We may have wind chills of 30 below, and it may actually be below zero in Boston. And this is the last thing that you want to hear, but we also have to follow what could be another precipitation event of some snow that could start as early as Tuesday night. Uh, kind of hoping that some of that might remain out at sea or just fringe us. 
I don't know for sure, but it does look like we will have at least something from that on Tuesday night, and that's followed by a very cold air mass. So the next week is still going to be very intense winter weather, hoping that some modification will happen after a week from now.